well, I'm at it again. I'm out here alone. Um, the rest of my hunting group went into town. I think some of them have to go, um, but they're going to see if they can stay and come back out. Um, at least one of them is supposed to be coming back unless something catastrophic happened back home or whatever. Um, so he's going to go and check his messages, that sort of thing. Uh, decided to come out and I hiked up a couple miles. Um, pretty near one of the glassing points that we picked before. And I was like, okay, you know, I'll hang out, I'll glass, I'll look, you know, I'll do this. And I was like, man, I feel like I've been out here forever. And I looked out on my watch and it had been 10 minutes. <laughs> I was like, okay, yep, this is the kind of slow, you know, dealings that I've got right now. So I went ahead and I opened up my bag and, um, you know, pulled out everything from my bag, just about, you can see, just about everything that I've got in my kill kit. Um, and I was glad I did because uh, those first couple of days that we're here, that it was raining, I um, kept setting my bag down on the ground to kind of rest, and so the bottom was just a little bit damp. And even storing it in the truck at night and everything, it was still a little damp on the inside. So I was like, okay, well, this is good. I can open it up, you know, kind of splay it open and, you know, dry everything out because it's a nice warm day. Um, I hiked up and I was sweating before I got, you know, 100, 100 yards or so from the truck because of all the clothes and stuff I was wearing. I was like, okay, I'm going to just stop and take all this off, you know, all the extra gear and everything, all the extra clothes. Um, I'm kind of curious now that I kind of swapped my kill kit for a heavier kill kit than I had last year. Um, how much it actually weighs. I've been carrying it around no problem and everything else, but after so many days it does start to add up. And um, yeah, so I've got um, a first aid kit that I built for myself um, that has things like uh, moleskin, iodine, um, quick clot powder, uh, tourniquet, like a combat tourniquet. Um, I've got gauze and medical tape um, and a few other little goodies in there. Um, I've got that. I learned from going and fishing that it doesn't do you a lot of good to build a big fancy um, you know, personalized medical kit if it can get wet and basically be ruined or at least not um, sanitary anymore. So I put it in its own bag, you know. <laughs> Um, that's all waterproof and everything. I originally got that for my phone. Um, if you watch the Seward videos or, uh, oh no, the Seward videos got lost. If you heard about the Seward, um, trip on the dip netting, on the dip netting series, then you would know what happened. Um, yeah, so... Most importantly, in my kill kit, I have um, game bags, knives, and um, water. <laughs> I pack some extra food and stuff in there too. Um, I got monstrously thirsty after I quartered up my first caribou. Um, I mean, just crazy, crazy thirsty because it's a lot of work and I was just sweating the whole time I was doing it. And what you don't necessarily know um, before you go and do it necessarily you know, is that when you are skinning it and you bring back the skin, the heat starts rising off of it almost immediately off of all the meat and everything. And that put a really hot work environment for me. So I always make sure I have water in my ticket. Now, a couple other things that I have um, are things like a bone saw, which hopefully I don't have to use because 
It takes forever with a little bone saw like this to go through even a small piece of bone. Um, I have a hatchet, which I saw someone use a hatchet to go through and cut the ribs off of the spine, and it was so fast. <laughs> like way faster than trying to use a knife and really save the blade and I was like now nah, that's the way to go and it's worth it to have a hatchet out here just in case anyway um let's see uh extra gloves and stuff I always have extra gloves now um because I found that if they get wet they're pretty much useless you know a whole box of ammunition um <laughs> if you if you went back and you watched um, my first series of videos, which is me in the Arctic, I did a solo do-it-yourself um, trip up the, the Dalton Highway, the Hall Road, as the locals like to call it. Um, I uh, had some problems that ended up working out okay, but um, being short on ammunition while I was out hunting, um, funny story, if you want to see, go watch the video, because it's, it's kind of fun. Um, I've got enough game bags for probably three caribou here, um, depending on how I fit them. Um, I've got a set that's open, and I've got a set that, um, is, um, like small and, like, they're, um, reusable bags. And then I've got a whole set that is unopened, that still has the, um, they have like a, a chemical that they put on there to help keep the flies off and preserve the meat and everything. <sighs> yeah. Um, because I I am interested in, you know, trying to keep, um, you know, electronics charged and so forth. I also keep um, a battery with me. And this battery, um, it's it's basically like, you know, the kind of battery that you would use uh, for like a weed eater, an electric weed eater, or something like that. Um, Using for my drills, so I already had a couple of them. And we bought this attachment for them. It goes on top. And so far, I've been out here and I've been charging um, my phone, which I legitimately haven't been using much. You know, just kind of open up, drop a pin in a map. You know, like yeah, I want to go back to this spot, um, or um, recharging my GPS, which consumes quite a bit of battery every day um, my in reach uses between um, 10 and 20 percent of its battery each day depending on how many messages I'm sending and receiving um, and I can charge it up and um, I like to keep my my Fitbit watched um, charged too because um, that it's really helpful to know how much energy I've expended and um, uh, what time it is and that's that's really really important to know what time it is because uh, you know we got to plan around okay if it took me this long to get here how long will it take me to get out what time does the Sun go down you know what time is it ultimately going to get dark and a lot of what I'm trying to base, you know, um, my movements and things on are going to be, you know, energy expended and meals. That is like the third shot or loud pop that I've heard come from that hill over there. And there's a, there's a guy over there that has a, um, a mining claim and he built a road out to it. And I think that him and all of his buddies go out there to his mining claim and go and hunt. They must be between 8 and 10 miles off the, the Taylor Highway over there. And that's a pretty good distance if you're trying to compete with other hunters. And it puts him closer to Zone 2, um, which is where... Um, all the herd is right now unfortunately um, the most recent report that um, my wife has been calling she's a team player she's been doing awesome 
um, taking care of sick kids and still sending me messages and keeping me updated about um, the reports and everything is that they're wildly distributed in zone two with no eastern movement, which is um, not exactly the worst news that I could have got about the herd, um, but it's it's definitely pretty bad. Um, that's why I'm sitting here with no caribou talking about what I got in my kill kit instead of showing you, you know, <laughs> whatever new, um, you know, caribou handlers I'm going to have for the wall back home. But um, I'm hoping that that mining claim over there, uh, those loud pops or maybe even gunshots, um, are actually caribou, like the herd is actually coming over, or at least, a, you know, a small portion of the herd is coming out and striking out early to go to Canada. And when I, when I say they're going to Canada, I, I kind of want to put in perspective that, um, they're, right now where I'm sitting, um, I'm about 15 miles from the Canadian border. I'm very close. Um, I could, I could drive there in just a few hours because how the roads are go to get actually out of, you know, Alaska and into Canada. Um, yeah, I'm very close to the Canadian border. I really wanted to, um, have you guys be able to see this view too, because it is gorgeous out here. Now, if you look, it always seems like there's one more ridge, one more mountain range out there, and this is what I've spent most of my day today um, out looking at. Again, there's another pop. Well, if they're shooting a caribou and not just messing around. So, I've still got a few more days out here. Um, today is Wednesday. Um, the general moose season just started up here too. So, if I see a moose, it's in any bowl for resident area, I can actually punch my moose tag. Um, I think that part of the reason why I haven't seen any moose since I've been out here is because I've been up high. The moose like to hang out down low, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. Wish me luck. Um, I'm out here alone today, and um, apparently very far from the herd. So I'm going to need a lot of luck. 